My name is Corey Wright. I'm the CEO of Honeyland. We are a play and own uh, gaming eco ecosystem. We call ourselves really Web 2.5 gaming. We're really trying to onboard a number of Web 2 users into the Web 3 ecosystem by making it insanely fun to play um, and building it on really, really sound economics. So, excited to be here. Definitely want to also give Corey a chance uh, to explain um, some of your strategies and also your or, uh, things that you've done um, with Honeyland. Sure, so yeah, I, th I think there's two things, uh, clear things that we can attribute a lot of our community success to. Uh, the first one was that we, we met it back in June, we started building community back in March, and the metas were get 200,000 people into your Discord, hand out whitelists, as many as you could, um, and that was really the meta at the time, and we wanted to completely buck that meta. We said we want to get a curated community into our Discord, one that is a Discord that we want to be a part of, one that we want to hang out at, one that we would love to find community members that were there for the right reasons, not just because they can get a whitelist and potentially flip and you know take advantage of this, this really bull market. And so um, we did little things, like when we had other communities reach out to us for collaborations, we um, only hand out whitelist to people who would complete a quiz before they joined our Discord. So they have to read our white paper and watch some videos and learn about our project. And so what we found is that it got people into our community that not only knew about our project, but we could generally, when they found out about it, we could get them pretty excited about it, and um, the conversation that took place in our Discord because of that was totally different than what most Discords were. And so we built a community from day one that wasn't huge, but it was really strong in terms of the conversation and the, um, the activity that was taking place. And then the second thing was, if you go back and look at our YouTube channel over the last six months, I've put together 100 different update videos for our community. Um, I put together three, two, three times a week, three to seven minute videos that gives our entire community updates on everything that we're working on, good and bad. Um, and so I think those two things, uh, we're a fully docs team, so we just had this, this uh, radical transparency and communication. I always say that you can tell how excited somebody is on what they're working on based on the frequency, transparency, and depth of their updates, and we take that as a real challenge to us, that we really want to be frequent, transparent, and deep on the updates that we're providing. And so we started with a really curated community, and then we just continue to communicate really, really uh, radically with them. And then I would say, uh, on the things that didn't work, the, the, the one thing I think that when I look back, uh, not the, the one thing, the thing that stands out though is, um, I wasted a lot of time on Twitter spaces with other communities, just because that was like the way to engagement farm and build awareness. And, and what we found is that tapping into our own community for that, um, for that kind of uh, awareness and, and um, to get more eyeballs on the project was far more valuable than trying to you know, do these, dis these AMAs and Twitter spaces with projects that didn't know anything about us, we didn't know anything about them. Um, it led to some really cool um, connections as well, so I don't want to totally throw it out, but we found that we were bringing the whole community, we weren't getting a lot out of it, so I thought that was the one thing that looking back probably didn't work as well as we would have, would have hoped, so. Um, meeting you guys all in person and playing your games, um, I think it's like super empowering and gives your community something very excited to, you know, be looking out for something to do, um, something to be super engaged with. Uh, Corey, I'd like to also hear your thoughts on this as well. Yeah, we've done a couple of uh, IRL events. I, I think it's certainly in our roadmap um, as we launch the game and we build a bigger community and all these sub DAOs and guilds and you're going to start to see a lot of other like sub communities forming within the community. I think our goal as uh, as a project is to facilitate kind of the IRL and out of game interaction in communities that, that can build. Um, and, and then you know when we show up to NFT NYC or these and. Um, you know, it, it's our goal that we can always um, get to, to see our community and, and um, put a face to, to a screen name or a Discord handle. Um, I love seeing all the partners in the space. I mean, I think that's one of the things that gets overlooked in, in Solana is how um, empowering the entire network is, like the, the entire ecosystem. You know, when I see people like Manny from Cardinal over here and all of our you know other partners with Fractal and, and um, you know, there's just so many partners that like empower what we do that, that we're essentially the publisher of, of the game and the community and all this stuff, but there's so many underlying technologies and partners that, that power this, and I think that's probably my favorite part of, of these spaces. The, our community is so many, and it's so difficult to get any of our community into Lisbon, Portugal, or New York, or wherever these events are. And so I think longer term, uh, our role in IRL is going to be um, 
potentially some major events, but really facilitating smaller pockets of our communities that um, that we can kind of activate them to get together and have smaller IRL meetups. And then, uh, I mean, merch is, a, is an IRL way that we can start to like put Honeyland in the, in the you know, um, in the houses and lives of, of people IRL. And so we're constantly looking for things like that, but certainly trying to build community, not just in the game, but outside of the game as well. Awesome, thank you. Um, as we wrap up, I really wanna hear, uh, Corey, your thoughts on just like, one piece of advice that you would give the audience today on one, like community building or, you know, having people just be excited for the game and um, be excited for when the game launches, the testing phase, the new kind of like era and development. Yeah, I think at a high level, the thing that we've done uh, throughout our project that has really rewarded us is we've really stripped every single meta down and decision down to the ground and tried to rebuild it back up. And if we land in the same place that a meta is today, great. Oftentimes we find that we would in some way um, iterate on that though, that we'd get a little bit better, we'd make some sort of a tweak and do it differently. And then from time to time we find that we completely innovate. And um, this space is so new that metas are very, very young. They're just experiments uh, at their core. And so when it comes to community building, when it comes to launching an alpha or a token or a game or a project, a collection, whatever it is, think differently about this. We're all experimenting in this, but to just follow the, the, the metas that are, or the norms, or what other projects are doing today um, is wildly lazy and won't get us to where we need to be next. And I think there's, there's so much opportunity for breakthrough in this space, and the projects and the teams that really experiment and do things differently and think critically about this and lean on their community and lean on their intelligence as a project and lean on the rest of the ecosystem to, to build progress are the ones that are gonna win in the end. But I would say just challenge metas and, and rebuild things. Constantly strive to iterate or innovate on just about everything that you're doing. And I think that can set you up in the space pretty well. Awesome, thank you. And I think that's a wonderful note to end um, today's discussion on. Uh, I'd like to thank Alex, Corey, Lavani, and Nico for joining me today on Go to Market Strategies and this discussion.